So, here's a short overview of what we're doing. Uh, we'll have a short introduction to antimicrobial peptides, their current uses, and then move on to their future development in the field. Uh, so, what are antimicrobial peptides? Antimicrobial, pep antimicrobial peptides are small 10 to 50 amino acid peptides that can either be cationic or peptide or anionic, containing mostly hydrophobic amino acid residues with an amphipathic nature. They involve the innate immune response in defending against uh, organisms in a non-specific manner. They are ubiquitous in nature, meaning they are found from the most simple prokaryotes to the most complex organisms, such as humans. Um, they're, they're wide action molecules, meaning that they can have the ability to act on a wide range of pathogens in a specific manner, usually through the formation of pores or through the inhibition of intracellular molecules like proteins, DNA, and RNA. So you get four types of AMPs. You get anionic peptides, which are, have the characteristic, which are characteristic in the fact that they contain they're rich in glutamic acid, glutamic and aspartic acids. An example is dermicidin, which is found in humans, which is secreted in the skin and acts by destroying uh, pathogens before they enter the body. Then you have linear cationic alpha helical peptides, which characteristically contain, which characteristically do not contain cysteine residues. Um, an example of these is cecropin, which is found in insects, which acts as a whole body uh, antibacterial. Uh, then you have the specific amino acid enriched cationic peptides. These characteristically contain uh, amino acids like proline, arginine, phenylalanine, tryptophan, and glycine. An example is indocyline, which is used in cattle as a buffer or a co, which was used in the co-treatment of persistent staph, staph infections. Uh, then you get the cysteine containing peptides, which characters contain uh, cysteine or disulfide bonds, usually one to three of them. Uh, an example is tachyplegians, or, which is found in horseshoe crabs, which is used in viral activation. Uh, so, current ideas and uses. So, they have their normal usage in the immune system, which is that of uh, defending, uh, against, uh, defending against pathogens. They have they use the buffer for conventional antibiotics, so they use in conjunctions with antibiotics to uh, remove persistence or resistant infections. Uh, they have a wide range of actions against pathogens due to their hematoxic nature, that meaning that they recruit and upregulate effect molecules. They can have antibacterial properties, example uh, against antibacterial properties against gram positive and gram negative bacteria. They have antiparasitic properties against parasites like malaria. Leishmania and Trypanosoma. They have antifungal properties against Candida, Cryptococcus, and Aspergillus. They also have antiviral properties against things like herpes virus, influenza, and possibly HIV. Uh, looking at the last one, the antiviral properties, most of these properties were discovered in in vitro models against uh, the purified proteins, so they're not 100% sure if it acts in the whole cell man. <coughs> Moving on to future research. So we spoke about, so in so we spoke about that they have there are those four main uh, methods of action against bacterial, parasitic, antiviral, and antifungal. But they've also been found to have anti-cancer properties. Uh, certain uh, AMPs like cecropins have the ability to kill cancerous cells through their normal function. We spoke about the normal function being the induction of pores. So cancer cells have characteristically or uncharacteristic an uncharacteristic uncharacteristic amount of negative charges which um, are a target for AMPs. So this uncharacteristic negative charge leads them to be selectively destroyed by AMPs. Um, they can also be used in the replacement of antibiotics. So uh, as we've all seen, antibiotics are slowly becoming more, uh, other things becoming slowly more and more resistant to antibiotics, meaning that a replacement has to be found and AMPs have been proposed as a useful, a useful Alternative. Alternative. <laughs> um, so, in conclusion, they are obliquitous defense molecules. They're found everywhere in nature. They have a wide range of effects, as spoken about earlier, like anti parasitic, antibacterial. They are effective, but not without faults. So, even <coughs> though they are effective against bacterial compounds, they can still develop resistance, but it's much slower than uh, traditional antibiotics. And they have an amazing amount of future possibilities, especially uh, the treatment of antiviral persistent bacterial and cancerous infections. Thank you.